Today, I'm going to show you different creative ways of combining images together inside of Photoshop. Hey, Cafe crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today I'm going to show you different ways of combining photos inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to show you some different techniques that you can kind of get creative effects. So if you want to do things like composites and collaging, this is kind of like the stepping stone. So what I really want to do here is just kind of maybe get the creative juices flowing, show you some different techniques, and then take those techniques and use them as springboards to create your own, you know, collages, composites, whatever it may be. So I've got two images I'm going to work on. I've got this one here, the basketball player. And then we've got this kind of cool background here. And both of these images I grabbed from Adobe Stock. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to combine both of these images into one document. So the way to do that is to just click and hold. And then we're just going to go up into the tab. And then the tab of the second image is now going to open. Don't release yet. Go down into the middle. If you want to drop it in the center, in this case, or if it was smaller and drop it in position, hold down the shift key, release. Now it drops it there. And now we can see our little arrow pointer is back on again. So what we've done is we've dropped this image here into this other one. And now we've got both of them on two separate layers. Notice this top one is a little bit too big. So what we want to do is we want to scale it down. Now, when combining images, you have the option of starting with the larger image and dropping the smaller one on top. Or as we've done here, we've dropped the larger one on the small one. Now, your strategy on this is going to depend on some different things. If your big one is going to be your match, you know, your background plate, and then you're going to drop the other ones in smaller elements, their resolution can be smaller. It won't really matter. In this situation here, what we're doing is we're dropping the larger image. So that means when I scale it down, it's not going to lose any quality and both layers are going to be nice and sharp because generally speaking, you want to scale images down, not up. However, you can get away with scaling them up around about, you know, 10, 15 percent without any noticeable difference. But once you start scaling them up too much, they start to look a little bit soft. OK, to scale this image down, what we're going to do is we're going to press Control T or Command T for free transform. And now this enables us to scale it. The problem is here, of course, we can't see the bounding boxes because they're not visible on screen. So we can shrink those down. If we hit Control or Command Zero, that will zoom out. Now we can see those. So what we need to do now is grab the corner one and drag it in. Now, depending on how you've set it up, you can either hit the Shift key and notice that that keeps it constrained. If you're trying to drag yours and you're on Photoshop 2020 like I am, and you see that it's unconstrained. Well, what you need to do is just click here on this little chain icon and now it's going to stay constrained. So if we take that chain icon off, unconstrained, hold shift to constrain it just like it was in previous versions of Photoshop. Now I'm holding this down and I want to do it maybe from the center. So if I hold Alt or Option key as well, now I can scale this from the center and this enables me to quickly get where I want to go. So I'm thinking about there, it looks good. And I'm going to hit the enter key right now and I can kind of move this around. So what I've done right now is I've combined the two photographs into one image. Now we're going to look at some different ways of blending them together. So the first way and the easiest way to blend them together is to use layer blend modes. So if we have a look here, we can see there's our image and we go onto our layers panel and select the layer. Now, these different blend modes do different things. There's different groups. See these darkened ones? These hide white in the highlights. Then we've got the lightened ones. And these obviously the ones we're going to be using. They hide black. Now, I've created another tutorial where I go very in depth into layer blending modes. And I actually got a free layer blending modes ebook that I'll give you guys. I'll add a link to that underneath. OK, so depending on how we want to do this, you know, we could just go to lighten mode. And there we go. We've got this cool effect. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you know what? We could call it a day. Now, if we wanted to just kind of strengthen him a little bit, just hit Control or Command J. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy it. And maybe we could blend a different mode together. So right now I'm using screen on this one. And underneath I'm using lighten. So if you see just the screen by itself, 
or there's a lighten by itself. Sometimes I'll use two layer blend modes together to get a different kind of an effect. Another way to do this is we're just going to go to normal. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend using a gradient. So what we're going to do is on our layer, just go down and apply a new mask. So we want a new layer mask and now we're going to paint on this. Now what's going to happen is black is going to hide that layer, white is going to show it. So that goes to say that different shades of gray are going to proportionally blend it in. So watch this. If we select the layer, not the mask, and just kind of drag it over, I'm holding down the shift key. I want to position this. I'd like it to happen about here and all this trail can happen behind them. So select the layer mask. And now we want to choose our gradient tool. There's our gradient tool right there. Hit the D key for default and that resets background and foreground colors. Then we're going to go up to the top here under the gradient and we're going to choose black to white. Now, if you're on 2020, yours is probably under here under basics. I just dragged that gradient. You can move these around. So I just dragged it where it would be convenient and available whenever I want it. So now I've got foreground to background. Make sure it's set to that linear, which is set here. Normal blend mode, 100% opacity. Okay, so what I'm going to do is wherever I start this gradient, when I click and hold, the gradient's going to start and then it's going to end wherever I release it. Now, if I go outside here, that line is going to appear and you'll see a line in there. So I'm going to stop just before the line, release, and now we get this smooth gradual gradient. If you want a shorter gradient, drag a shorter distance and you can see how you can change the way that blends. I kind of like it like that. Now, another thing you could do too is you can go onto this mask and you could paint on there. So if we grab a black brush, so let's grab our brush and let's actually, we're going to choose a white brush right now. A white brush will bring back that layer. So if some of this is semi-transparent, painting it in white, notice what it does is it just kind of brings it back nice and solid. Let me show you. I'll make that brush a little bit bigger. And so if I wanted to include some of this, notice as I paint with that, it keeps it. So let's undo that. And what we're going to do is select the brush, make it a very soft brush and a very, very large brush. All right. And right now I'm hitting the right bracket key to make that brush much bigger. And then you could go in here and see how you could kind of manually do it. And if you wanted to go the other way, flip it around with black, and so you could just kind of paint it away. So if you wanted to kind of taper it off, so you've got more of that in the background, we can do that just by simply painting with those shades. So we can do it with the gradient or we can do it with the brush as demonstrated. Now this background's not matching. Let's just quickly match it. We're going to select the layer. We're going to create a new adjustment layer by clicking on there. And then let's choose hue and saturation. And all we need to do is change the hue. And as we do this, we can blend it in and make it where the background works nicely with our foreground. And I'm going to get rid of the mask so I can just right click on this mask and just delete layer mask and that'll get rid of it. And I want to show you one other way of blending this together. With this layer selected in normal blending mode, we're going to go down to advanced blending. So go down under where it says effects, click on it and choose blending options. This will bring up our advanced blending or our blending options sliders. Now down the bottom, we have blend if maybe you've heard of it before. If not, it doesn't matter. We've got two. We've got this layer and the underlying layer. This is the layer here. That's the underlying. Black is the shadows. White is the highlights. So we could work on our gray channel, which is our luminosity, or we could go down and choose individual colors. Let's work on our luminosity. You'll spend most of your time there. So we want to get rid of the dark area. So what we do is click that arrow and drag across and notice as we do it, they disappear. Now you might've seen some abstract effects like this and wondered how it was done. Well, this is how we do it. Now what we want to do is get a smoother blend. So we need to split this little triangle here. Hold down ultra option, click. Notice it splits. And now we just drag and we can create a nice smooth blend. 
So if you wanted to, you know, go very abstract, you could go like that or bring them closer together. And essentially all we're really doing there is hiding most of that background. Show more of the background. Show less of the background. Then just click OK. So essentially that's how you would do it. Now, if you wanted to keep some of these areas in there, here's another way you could work is just hit Control or Command J to copy this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click here for the blending. Let's just click this all the way back. And what we're doing is essentially just undoing it. So we've got this effect there and on top, we've got the full effect. So if we wanted to just add it in certain places, what we would do is create an inverted mask. Hold down Alter Option, go down where the mask is, click. It creates a mask filled with black, which hides everything. Now, if you want to show certain areas, we just paint on this mask with white. So let's go choose our brush. The B key, by the way, would get us there. Left bracket key will make that brush smaller. And we're going to paint with white. As we paint with white, what it does is it just brings back the contents where we're painting. So if you wanted, you could kind of have, you know, just a shirt looking very solid like that. And you could have his legs disappearing. If you wanted to just do his shoes, we could do that. And what this essentially does is it just gives you more control. You know, do we want to do the shorts? Sure. Let's add the shorts in. And see what we can do. We can just paint this in wherever we want it. Now, of course, you can also combine these with other effects if you wanted. If we hide this and we go back here, you could combine this with a, a layer blending mode to create some kind of a different look there. So what if we went something like screen? So what I'm trying to do here is give you some springboards to creative ideas. So I'm curious if you found these tips useful. Let me know in the comments underneath if these are going to help you create composites and collages. And if you learned anything new, let me know what it was. And by the way, guys, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe or you've been lurking and you haven't become a subscriber yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and enable the notifications, become part of our notification squad, and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And by the way, guys, if you liked it, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.